it is our pleasure to present to you the Sham New Story. I'd like to introduce Will, trainer Tom. Thanks a lot, Jenna. We're all excited to be here today to show you just how we care for these amazing animals. Now, Shannon's story began when a large adult male killer whale was accidentally caught in some fishing nets up in British Columbia. That whale was named Namu after a local fishing port up there. He was soon moved to Seattle, Washington, where he became the first killer whale to be on public display up in the Pacific Northwest. A young female soon joined him and was named Shamu, which is a contraction of the word she and Namu. Now Shamu then became the first killer whale to travel by airplane when she came here to SeaWorld San Diego way back in 1965. She made a very powerful and instant connection with the public who knew very little about these animals. We continue to celebrate her name through our entire Shamu family. All right, now we're gonna introduce you to some members of that Shamu family. On the far right hand side of the stage, we have our first baby killer whale ever born here way back in 1988. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Orchid. So she was born September 23rd, 1988, so she just turned 24 years old. She's about 19 and a half feet long, and she weighs just under 6,000 pounds. That actually makes her an average sized adult female killer whale. Our smallest whale is Kalia. She's, she's eight years old and she weighs about 3,000 pounds. Over here with Matt, we have Ikaika. Now, he was born in Cyril of Orlando back in 2002, so he's 10 years old right now. Ikaika weighs about 5,000 pounds, but he's not anywhere near done uh, growing. These animals keep growing until they're about 16 to 18 years old. Our, our largest killer whale here is Ulysses. He weighs 9,600 pounds. And that also is an average size adult male. The killer whales can actually get upwards of 12, even 15,000 pounds, which makes them the largest species of dolphin in the world. Now, if you focus your attention off to the right hand side, we've got Orchid coming out to give you guys a little wave hello. You can wave back and she can see you. So pop up and wave those flippers. Now, those are called pectoral flippers. The flippers on the sides of their body that are used for steering and stopping and waving hello. If you were to x-ray the flipper, you'd see five bones resembling the human hand in shape. Also notice the white oval eye spots. The killer whale's eyes are located directly in front of the eye patch, right near the corner of the mouth. Now in that mouth are conically shaped teeth used for grasping and swallowing their prey whole. Off on the left hand side we have Ikaika and now Orchid as well, giving you a good look at those very impressive teeth. They're interlocking, they do not chew their food, and here at SeaWorld these whales get between 100 and 200 pounds of restaurant quality fish each and every day. Equipped with these adaptations, it's no wonder that killer whales are the ocean's top predator and have mastered many different methods of catching their prey. Killer whales are among the fastest of all the marine mammals. So what do you say guys? Let's show them what you got. Using their powerful tail flutes for propulsion, the killer whales can reach speeds of up to 30 miles an hour. Very nice, guys. All right, get those cameras out in the middle of the pool. We've got, you can see these animals are incredible swimmers, but what's most amazing is their ability to lift thousands of pounds, the 
completely up and out of the water. With up to 56 conically shaped teeth used for ripping and tearing, it's no wonder the killer whale is the ocean's top predator. techniques used for the big impressive behaviors you just saw are also utilized for forming daily medical examinations. We've trained our animals to calmly accept regular medical procedures. This is essential in allowing us to more easily diagnose and treat illnesses. This type of training is called husbandry training and Tom's going to explain a little bit more about what that means. In addition to the high energy behaviors, some of which you just saw, we do train the whales on husbandry behaviors. Now these are the behaviors that allow us to take better care of the whales. We're going to demonstrate one of those right now here with Orchid. And Christy's asked her to roll over upside down, inverted. And this is a very important behavior to train. This is called a tail fluke present. The reason it's an, it's an important behavior is this is where we can get blood sample from. Once every other month, our veterinarians will come down here and we'll get voluntary blood samples on all the whales. Now the veins of the killer whale they run very close to the surface of the tail flukes are quite easy for our veterinarians to see. And it's, again, it's a very important behavior to train because by looking at the blood samples, we know exactly what's going on with the animal's health. Now, in, in addition to the tail fluke present and the voluntary blood samples, we do train them on other husband or behaviors, such as lineups, looking inside their mouth, checking out their teeth. We collect urine from the females, and by looking at the urine, you can tell whether or not one might be pregnant. We also measure the whales with the tape measure, and we weigh them once a week. Now, by uh, collecting all of this data, this allows us to track actual growth rates on the whales, something that's very difficult to do out in the wild. Thanks a lot, Orchid, for that look at the tail fluke present. Like most of the ocean's marine mammals, killer whales have developed complex sounds that they use to explore their world and communicate with each other. For over 12 years, research has been done right here at Shamu Stadium on killer whale vocal de development. We have underwater microphones called hydrophones embedded in the walls on the floor of the underwater viewing pool. We use these to determine which sounds the animals are making and to localize which animals are making the call. Through research, we have found that killer whale vocal development is similar to human language development. Killer whale calves start out making cries, then move on to babbling. Finally, they start to imitate the adults. Uh, from these vocalizations, we've been able to train the whales on a variety of different vocals that can be heard up above the water, and we're going to give you some examples of those vocalizations right now. we have found that the most successful trainers are the ones who learn along with the animals. It takes some time, but trainers focus first on building strong relationships with the killer whales. They do this through creating interesting, stimulating, and fun training sessions. And here's Missy to explain what you'll be seeing today. Thank you, and hello everyone. Today we're going to give you a look at one of our training sessions. We have many different types of training sessions. We have an acronym for these to help us all remember them. It's called HELPERS. This stands for husbandry. You look up on the board right there, husbandry are the behaviors that we use to maintain the health and well-being of our killer whales. Exercise sessions. Just like you and, he, you and I need to be in the best physical condition, so do the animals. Learning sessions. That's where an animal is learning a brand new behavior. Play times. Pretty, pretty self-explanatory. Just having fun with the animals finding out what they enjoy, what they find reinforcing. Relationship sessions are when we're just hanging out with the animals, letting them know that we appreciate them, we respect them, and that's how they gain that trust with us. And of course, all the excellent shows that you see here at SeaWorld. Now today, all of you are gonna get a chance to see a learning session. So Orchid 
who's right over there with Christy, is working on a new behavior. We call it an Einstein. And simply because it's a very challenging behavior, most of the other whales probably can't handle how complex it is. However, Orchid is pretty much our smartest killer whale. And I'm sure all the trainers would agree. She picks on up on behavior very quickly, and she tends to help us out if we need to work on something with another animal, she can actually show that animal exactly what we're looking for. So the way this works is, this is a behavior that she does know. It's called a fling. So she will be getting people wet. So if you're sitting in the first 16 rows, watch out for that. Now you'll see Christy give her the signal. It looks just like this. She will also give her a finger number. So one, two, three, four, and five. Orchid can actually determine where to go along the pool with those numbers because we have trained her to understand that. So we're gonna try for window pane four. And the way that we show her four is with a snowball. So Tom's gonna throw the snowball. Christy gave her the signal with a four. And she went exactly where it was. So what Christy did is she blew her whistle. This is how we communicate to the animals that they've done a correct behavior. They're trained to understand that basically that means good job and you're gonna receive a reward. And that can be fish, but we also use many different types of rewards. And a snowball is actually a reward. So we're doing it again. Watch out for that water. <laughs> Excellent job, Orchid. <laughs> All right, looks like we're going to wrap up that training session. Let's give Orchid a big round of applause. <laughs> Now that you've had a chance to see one of our training sessions, we're going to show off a few more spectacular behaviors that all of you will see later today in our One Ocean Show. Now these behaviors also have the potential to get you wet with 55 degrees salt water. So if you're sitting in the first 16 rows, over here or over here, you may want to move to higher and drier ground. Come on Shamu, let's go! many threats. If you'd like to become more involved in the sport of killer whales and other animals, please go to our SeaWorld and Bush Gardens Conservation Fund website at swbg-conservationfund.org. Later today, when you see our One Ocean Show, we invite you to remember all these things that occur behind the scenes. We are honored to be able to share Shamu's story with you, and we hope we've inspired you to celebrate, connect, and care for all animals.
We'll be sticking around in case you have any questions. We hope you've enjoyed the Shamu story. Have a great rest of your day here at SeaWorld. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.